Hello, my name is Elizabeth Martinez. Welcome to the Sunday morning service for Victorville United Methodist Church and the First United Methodist Mission of Barstow. We're glad that you could spend some time with us. We pray that you're well and would like to encourage you to share this video with anyone that may not have it easily accessible. You can find all our videos on our Facebook page, United Methodist Church of Victorville, or on our YouTube channel, Victorville United Methodist. You can also find our service in audio form by calling 760-245-2529. God bless you. The scripture reading for today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. This is found in the New International Version. Jesus' Sorrow for Jerusalem At that time, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said to him, Leave this place and go somewhere else. Herod wants to kill you. He replied, Go tell that fox. I will keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will reach my goal. In any case, I must press on today and tomorrow and the next day, or surely no prophet can die outside Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you are not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The scripture passage for today was read, and it's Luke 13, 31 through 35. Many of us have had situations when someone tries to bully us. For our children, sometimes we find that a jealous schoolmate will humiliate them at a party or on the playground. So they want to leave the room or leave the play area. And then the bully gets to be the center of attention. On a global scale, we feel like we are watching that playground scene happening on the highest levels of destruction. One man trying to get rid of his neighbors for his own selfish gain. That bully believes these people are worthless and has the right to kill and destroy them, while the rest of us are watching 
and praying and wanting to do something, anything to stop this nonsense. The use of fear to control others and the use of division and disapproval to mold us into what they want are the tools of the aggressors. This happens in relationships of all levels, on the world stage, just as it does in our homes and communities. I took several, several courses in domestic violence, and Alfredo, my husband, and I worked for child protection services, and we learned how this plot plays out all over. Have you ever been in a situation and not had anyone to stick up for you? We see how the world is standing up to the big bully and many are joining together to help in a way that shows the Ukrainians that we care and God's love is strong enough to take on the actions needed to help the ones in harm's way. We see how one out of control ruler wants his people to believe their neighbors do not count. It is all too much of a familiar scene. Well, this scene is what is also playing out in the gospel lesson for today. The ruler Herod is on a rampage of intimidation and has captured and beheaded Jesus's cousin, John, who happened to be a fellow spiritual leader in the community, baptizing disciples and followers. But Herod, Herod kills him in hopes of stopping the new surge of believers, new followers who have come out in the thousands to be healed and fed and inspired to believe in God Almighty, not Herod or Caesar. Jesus knows this political figure and he calls him out as the fox. And he knows his tactics. So he turns toward the hen house. As he says, go and tell the fox, that trickster, that schemer, that his power, the power of destruction has its limits. Having chased away the fox, he then wants to gather the chicks. Perhaps it is obvious to you as it is to me. What Luke is pointing out here, it seems he is making us look at the choice we all have faced at one point or another in life, where we are given an option very similar as we see here. We can find our safety and security in the powers that function by creating fear in others while we protect our own interests, our own self-interests, or we can run to the one who shelters us in the shadow of his wings, who in his brokenness, he still pours out his love for us, an unending need to care for us. We need to know love like Christ offers. We need to cling to that love, to that hope when we walk through these valleys of death in our life. And when we feel like everything is out of hand, we need to know that the whole world is in God's hands. And then we must take responsibility to be the ones who live by his example of loving and caring for others. All around us, at any given time, there are those who feel disconnected, those who feel as though no one cares, no one is there for them. There are those who feel that their mistakes define them in our eyes, who need us to spread our wings and gather them in. To be forgotten, to be insignificant, to be unloved has always been a common experience in our world. But God sent his son to be the medicine for this. And Jesus depends on us to keep giving out more doses of that love that he taught us to have for others, alive and ready and in motion all the time so that people know 
for Jesus, it doesn't matter how much you have messed up. He still wants to gather you in as a hen gathers her brood. Well, Reverend Derek Weber, the designer of this new worship series, explains that the scripture for today holds the basic idea that the whole series was based on. We need to contemplate and meditate on what Jesus is saying till we feel in our hearts that we are gathered up by Jesus. The one who longs to wrap his wings around us is waiting and offering and hoping to be there for us forever. It may seem like a difficult thing to do, but it isn't. It's as easy as a prayer asking Jesus to take care of us in whatever situation we find ourselves in. So let's hold on to this image, this whole Lenten season, the image of Christ who wants to gather us up, to protect us, to redeem us. And my hope is that this year's Lenten journey will give you a sense of grace in our gathering for worship and a sense of acceptance and love. We stand before our Lord, not in fear of someone who calls us to be accountable, but someone who says we can do better, that what has happened was not good, yet with the right help, we can change that. We stand before our Lord with that deep joy of knowing and trusting in the one who will set our feet on the right paths, the one who is there to help us work through whatever it is that is making us stumble and help us to do better one step at a time. When I was a girl, I spent my weekends and summertime at my grandma's farm. We lived in Sioux Falls, the biggest city in South Dakota, and we were just about 30 minutes from the farm is where my parents grew up. Grandma had chickens and a hen house and guinea hens, and I would help her pick eggs reaching under the hens in the warm hen house. So it was very, very comforting to me to read this passage that brings back memories of my loving grandma, the one who, for me, in my life, was this image of our loving, caring Jesus. I just love the fact that this image is the one Jesus presents to us of how he wants us to see himself in our relationship to him. It is a very special one. Just how tender and loving can you get? He wants to be the kind of protection for us like the hen protecting her chicks. That's the kind of love he has for us. It's not an image of a lion protecting her cubs, but a hen, a humble, simple hen looking after her chicks. He wants us to know that he is here to help us, even in the midst of trouble, because it is in that circumstance that the hen is protecting her chicks with her wings over them, tell, telling the threat, whatever it may be, that she is the protector of the brood. I got also a wonderful feeling similar to this when I was watching the news the other day and they showed a young girl who was singing with the most beautiful sound, that of an angel. She was singing to the group of Ukrainian families that she was staying with in a shelter. She was wanting to lift their spirits and she was singing the Disney song in her language that you may remember called let it go. And she was singing that song for the moms and dads and the other boys and girls in the room. But she was also singing that song for the rest of the world. She was being strong for everyone, reminding us of the force and the love that they share, as long as they keep strong and protect each other. Well, I remember watching a cat at my grandma's farm sneaking up on the hens and chicks 
And I remember the reaction of the cat not being able to follow through on her plan for an easy snack. Seeing the hen gather her chicks and how the hen puffed up her wings and her chest feathers got bigger and she was afraid of the, she was unafraid of the cat looking straight at that feline foe. And the hen would make a kind of a, a, a broken whining noise and the cat would just back down and sit and wait. The hen would pump her wings over the chicks as she would kind of stomp her feet if she gathered them away from the cat's view. We all need to be protected like that. And our savior is just the kind of loving protector that we need. But likewise, Jesus calls us to be loving protection for the ones that we encounter in this world because we know the strength in how he loves us. We know the promise in how he protects us. He gives us new life, free of sin, a new chance to do our best. Jesus reminds us that he is our strength in the face of danger. Like the little Ukrainian girl reminds us to be strong as she sang, here I stand in the light of day. Let the storm rage on. The cold never bothered me anyway. Amen. Thank you for being with us throughout the service. We hope that you were able to find it inspiring. If you would like to make a donation, you can mail it to the church address, 15150 La Paz Drive, Victorville, California, 92395 or 404 East Mountain View Street, Barstow, California, 92311. You can also make an online donation through our church website, churchonlapaz.com or vvumc.org. Remember, you can also listen to our service by calling 760-245-2529. We thank you for any help that you can provide as we're trying our best to do what we can in these trying times. Until next time, God bless you.